Hello, my friends. I am Jaap Dieleman, and today it is my privilege to speak to you about the Word of God, the Bible. And uh, I love this book so much. It is an amazing book, and look what I have here. This is a very, very old Bible. And uh, of course, this is not a very handy one to carry into the church. But this one is in my family for over 300, almost 340 years, 300 for almost. And uh, of course, we don't use it today to preach from because we have a more handsome size. This is more handsome size. And even we uh, use now a digital uh, in, in iPad and so on. Uh, however, the content is always the same. That has never, ever changed. And uh, the amazing thing about the Bible, it is a book. Uh, it means uh, book of books. Uh, it contains actually 66 books written over a period of almost 4,000 years. Uh, by approximately about 40 different authors. And these authors live in different time frames, in different places. And uh, they were uh, counselors, kings, prophets, priests, farmers, uh, you name it, uh, even doctors. Uh, so they were high class, low class, middle class, fishermen, different ones. And yet it breeds one message, one spirit, because it is the word of God, God's word. And that's my message of today to you, to minister to you about this book. And the word of God is called the Bible, but it's also called the word of God. We have the word of men, we have the words of the devil, but today we minister about the word of God. And the term, the word of God, we find in our Bible 1154 times. And in some other translations, it is 786 times. So the word word is a very important word in the Bible. And first of all, let me show you how important it is to know the book, read the book and meditate and do what the book tells you. Uh, I open the book of Joshua, which is actually after the first five books of Moses, the sixth book in the Bible. And this uh, says in Joshua 1, verse 8, this book of the law, which is actually, in generally speaking, the whole Bible, shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. This is Moses' instruction to Joshua. He says, speak the word, meditate, think about the word, and do it on a daily basis, and then act accordingly, exactly, uh, that you may walk in it, do it uh, so that you may prosper. And uh, so there is a promise, amazing promise. It says that you, that you make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Everyone wants good success in life. And God's word is giving us an amazing promise of good success if we take his word, if we take his law, which is actually a negative word, but the meaning is not law, it's the it's, it's a manual, it's a book of instructions, it's full of wisdom, it's full of guidance, it's to help us, to guide us, to lead us, to protect us, to direct us. It is light, it is prophecy. So uh, in the natural, this is actually what always happens like this, because of a child, when he begins to speak, he will speak words, but he don't know yet what is the meaning of the word? Uh, that is later on as he begins to develop his mental capacities and he begins to think. Then he begins to think about the meaning of the words he is uh, speaking. And uh, ultimately, so that is first it's in the mouth and then it's on the mind. And then ultimately 
It is the mission of life to do the word of God. And then if these three things are in place, God gives this amazing promise that he will prosper you and will give you good success. Now, from my perspective, I grew up with the Bible. I showed you the family Bible and I'm a Christian for 45 years now. I've been studying this book all of my life since I received Christ. And uh, I love this book more than any other book. And it's actually the basis, the foundation of my life. In fact, uh, I rely more on this word than on my own mind and my own ideas. And uh, let me tell you the power of this word, of this word of God, because we used to say uh, the power of his word, but the Bible speaks the opposite even. It says the word of his power. So this word, this Bible contains and releases the power of God. The power of God is released. And that's why I want to encourage you as, a, as you look at this program, you'll be inspired to get the Bible, to read the Bible, to eat the Bible, to meditate the Bible, to speak the Bible, to read it to others and to do it, to live according to its instructions so that you will be successful guaranteed success and prosperous. Psalm 107 verse 20 says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from destructions. And uh, another translation says, from the grave. God's word is also an instrument for healing. And how many people run to doctors and take medicine and do all kinds of things to obtain healing. But my friends, he sent his word and he healed them. There is healing power in the word of God. And on top of that, Psalm 119, the longest Psalm in the Bible, verse 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Now, of course, we have to consider the days of Jesus. They didn't have electric lights. So what they had was an oil lamp. And if you walk in the darkness of the night, the lamp would give you just enough light to see the next step where you can put your feet so you wouldn't stumble or fall into a ditch or in the darkness, bitten by a snake whatsoever. So it is a lamp to your feet and a light on your path. What does it mean? It means when you have enough light for the next step in your life by the word of God, and that's how I live now for 45 years, step by step by step, as I understood, I just stepped and then I got, I carried the light, I carried the word, so I had light for the next step and the next step and the next step. But when I look back, I can see it is not just a, a lamp for my feet. It has become a light on my path. I can see the path I have walked in the last 45 years because I, 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 I took the word of God. And it says in verse 130, the opening of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. God, even if you're a simple man, you don't need to be a scholar. You don't need to be a university professor to understand because the Holy Spirit, uh, when you open the book and you do it prayerfully, it will give you light and it will give you understanding. Even if you're a simple person, the Holy Spirit is taking care of that because the word of God is a sword of the spirit. Hallelujah. And in Peter, the book of Peter, first Peter chapter one, verse 22 to 25, it says, you have been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. 
That word lives and abides forever. And it makes you be born again. You become a new person. And then Peter is quoting from the book of Isaiah, a very famous verse. It says, all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. But we all know the grass withers and its flower falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. It's amazing, my friends, that Bible hasn't changed in thousands of years. People's minds are changing. Politics are changing. Fashion is changing. Oh, people change their mind. But God says, I am unchangeable. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. You can rely on God today, tomorrow, and forever. He will never change. He is reliable. His word endures forever. It survives time. It survives space. It survives everything. Now, this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. It is the good news of Jesus Christ that we preach to the people for them to understand that this is the word of life. And that's why it is my aim that you will have the word for yourself. You have a Bible that you can read. And if you cannot read, find someone who can read the Bible to you. Because in the book of Revelation, it says, blessed those who read this book and blessed those who hear the book read to them. So even if you are illiterate, you have never learned to read, then someone can read it to you. The same book says, there's the last, the 66th book in the Bible says, blessed are those who keep this book and read this book and hear it read to them but cursed those who add things to this book, who change things, the curses in this book will be added unto him. And so we must be very careful. And it also says, cursed those who take things out of this book, the blessings will be taken out of his life. So there is a strong warning not to change, but to accept the word, believe the word and do the word. It is, let me summarize uh, some of these wonderful and powerful things that the word is to us. It is a lamp unto your feet. It is a light unto your path. It is an anchor. You know, when a ship is in the harbor, they throw the anchor. And when the storm comes, the ship will not drift because it is stabilized. We live in a world that is totally unstabilized. It is dark days and heavy times are ahead of us. Even the Bible declares so. But if we are into the word of God, if we are into that unshakable word of God, because everything shall be shaken, but the word of God shall not be shaken. Isn't that amazing? And then it is a medicine for your bones, for your body. The word has healing power. When you live your life according to the word, he sent his word and he healed them. As you read the word, it will make healing in your spirit, into your body, into your life, into your soul. The Bible calls it the seed of the woman. In Genesis 3.15, God speaks to the devil as he has deceived mankind and he says and between your seed and her seed the seed of the woman the seed of the woman shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel and that is actually a prophecy about the coming of Jesus and Jesus is the seed of the woman because the angel went to Mary and said, you will be pregnant and you will have a son and his name shall be Jesus Christ. And Mary said, how will it happen if I have not intimacy with the men? We all know that's how children are born and created. 
And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will give birth to the baby boy. And then Mary said, behold, let it be unto me according to your word. The word became flesh. John 1, 14 says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is the word incarnated into a human being, God in the flesh, through a virgin, which is an amazing miracle. That's why his blood can cleanse you, because his blood has not been contaminated by the sin of Adam, hallelujah, it says, John 1, 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah, that is amazing. Christ is the living word. We have the written word, we have the living word, and we have the Holy Spirit who is using the sword of the spirit, which is the spoken word to perform amazing miracles and to execute the will of God. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. My friends, listen to me. This book is a sword. It's a spiritual sword. You cannot fight evil spirits with medicine, psychology, meditation, drugs, whatever, politics, bombs. There's no way to drive out demons, spiritual beings by material, material issues, material weapons, material things. It, spiritual forces need a spiritual counterattack. And God has given you in his book, the power. And even Jesus, when he was in a battle with the devil, what did he say? It is written. It is written. It is written. He knew what was written. But you never know what is written if you don't read the book. And therefore, it is my desire that you will have access to the word, that you will have a hunger to the word, that you will desire to read it, to eat it, to drink it, to fill your spirit, your stomach, your spirit man with the word of God and fill yourself. You will satisfy your spiritual hunger by eating the word of God. It will release the power of God to overcome the demonic forces. They overcame, the Bible says, the devil by the blood of the lamb that was shed on the cross and by the word of their testimony, which is the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then this is another wonderful verse in Hebrew 4, uh, Hebrew 4 verse 12. For the word of God, the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. It is like a surgeon's knife dissecting the cancer from the healthy body and delivering you from this tumor. And the word of God is so sharp. It's a razor sharp to help you to dissect yourself, to separate yourself from sin, from sickness, from Satan and to join God and his amazing blessings. 
Let me read it once again. This verse is so powerful. I love the word of God. For the word of God is living and powerful. It's not just a book. It is the word of the living God. The almighty, the omnipresent, and the all-knowing God, omniscient God, has called men to write down his words. And when we read his words, it's not the word of men. It's the word of God Almighty. And it contains his power. And it's a life and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. Some people are soulish. But God wants you to be a spiritual man. And he will... He will divide these two and the joints and the marrow and he's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents. God will clarify the motives of your heart and purify them by the power of his word. Hallelujah. It's like a measuring line. Isaiah 28, 70 says, also I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness, the plummet. It's measuring what is right and what is wrong. It's a guide of life. It is the breath of life. Amen. Jesus said in John 6, 35. Wow. I am the breath of life. Hallelujah. He who comes to me shall never hunger. Are you hungry? I tell you, my friends. Come to Jesus, you will never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. No thirst, no hunger when you come to him. Hallelujah. I am the living bread, John 6, 51, which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. So it's not just no hunger and thirst, but when you eat this bread, you will never die. You will live forever. Doesn't mean you may not die physically, but you will obtain eternal life. When you pass away uh, on this side of eternity, you wake up on the other side and be in the everlasting, wonderful presence of the living God, of the Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. He will live forever. And the bread that I shall give in my, is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Jesus gave his life to feed your spirit, to feed your soul with that with satisfies and that gives you a future. It is also a hammer that can crush the rocks. Jeremiah 23, verse 28 and 29 says the prophet who has a dream let him tell a dream and he who has my word let him speak my word faithfully i am mostly a man of the word not of dreams i'm not against dreams god may give some people dreams i don't have many dreams but i have the word of god and i'm satisfied with it and now speak his word faithfully what is the chaff to the wheat, says the Lord. Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. God can crush every problem and deliver you because that is the power of his word. It is eternal. It's unchangeable. You know, we have in London a kilo in a special glass in a, in a glass hut uh, special climatized because they want to guard the exact measurement of the kilo and the meter in paris and they don't want it to change not even the milligram and that is what is happening god's word is unchangeable it is eternal it is the rock on which we stand a rock that will not shake. Everything shake. We live in a world that is shaking. The, whole, the world economy is shaking. The world peace is shaking. 
The world is shaking everywhere. But if you build your life on the rock, Jesus Christ, the word of God, you will never shake. Shake. Amen. And then this is amazing. It's called Testament. It's called Old and New Testament. Now, what is a testament else than uh, it is, is the last will of a person before he dies? So when you read the Bible, be aware that God gave his son and he died. So the validity of a testament is only been released after the death of the one who wrote his last will. Jesus died. What is more, he rose again. That means all the promises in the book are yours. Forgiveness, deliverance, healing, eternal life, peace, joy. All these blessings and much more are all in the word. It takes a lifetime. I'm studying the book now for 30 years, for 40 years, 45 years. I'm still discovering more amazing things in my testament, what has been given to me by my wonderful God who gave his son. Hallelujah. It is his love letter. He, Jesus, is the word became flesh. Hallelujah. It's like the rain that drops on the soil and water it so that the seed will germinate. Even Isaiah 55 says, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It shall accomplish what I please. And I shall, and it shall prosper in the things for which I send it. That's why I love the Bible. God's, I love this book so much. It is the word of our living God. Amen. Let me close down this wonderful message of encouragement for you to obtain a Bible if you can. Uh, even buy one. Try to get one. Let someone read it to you if you cannot read for yourself. It will turn your life around completely. Psalm 103 verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, you, his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, who is executing the word of God in action, his angels. How do they do that? It says, who do his word, hearing the voice of his word. Now, we know that words in a book, they have no voice. When will the word of God have a voice? It is when we believe it and speak it by faith. The moment we speak the word of God, not our own words, his word, by faith, it will activate God's angels. We don't have to activate them. God has called his servants the angels. Bless the Lord, you, his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word. When they hear his word from your mouth, and you declare forgiveness, and you declare healing, and you declare salvation, and you declare deliverance, it will release the, the word of God through the action of the angels who will heed the voice of his word and then do his word and deliver the blessings of God. That's why we proclaim the message of hope and salvation, deliverance and forgiveness. Hallelujah. And then in closing this Psalm 107 then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distress, out of their fears. Are you fearful? God, when you cry to him, he will deliver you from fear. He sent his word 
and he healed them. This was my psalm when I got saved 45 years ago. I was distressed and in great fear, but then he sent his word and he healed me. And what he did for me, he will do for you. If you open your heart, you will overcome all evil by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. In closing, let me ask you to open your heart, receive the living word, Christ Jesus, and say, Lord, come into my heart. Forgive me, wash away my sins. Accept me as your child. I do accept you as my savior. Thank you for forgiving my sins and help me to walk in your ways, to love you and follow you all the days of my life, to speak your word, to meditate your word and to do your will so that I will be prosperous and I will be successful up to the glory of your mighty name. I pray in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. God bless you and see you next time.